welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's show is a really scary story. I've just read through it and it's got me all excited. I can't wait to put it up there on YouTube for you guys to enjoy. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Please do like and share. It's always appreciated, guys. Let's keep building this channel. Let's get straight into it. Tonight's story is entitled Hunters of the Forest. <sighs> I honestly don't know where to begin. I'm sitting here on an exam table, the paper crinkling every time I shift. The smell of powerful antiseptics linger in the air from the last time the room was cleaned. My left arm is still numb from the topical anaesthetic the doctor gave me while she stitched up my arm. So I'm using speech to text for this, but I'm having to whisper so the nurse doesn't hear me and have me committed. Anyway. What I told her wasn't exactly the truth of what happened out in the woods of New York tonight. But, if I don't tell someone, I think I'll explode. My name is Justin. Let's leave it at that. I'm a student at the University of Vermont in Burlington, and I was going to meet some friends for a fun weekend of camping in the Adriandac, Adriandac Park. You know, as a way for us to kick off our summer in a relaxing way, especially after all the stresses of the finals. So, here I was, a few hours late to meet up thanks to a certain professor that had finals on the final hour of the final day. Driving on Route 9N, I was dark already. It was dark already, but my headlights were easily cutting through the gloom, highlighting the thick trees around me. Here and there, I would see the flashes of eyes in the forest little friends that lived in a forest I was visiting. I was so far back in the woods that if I had my cell phone on, it would have shown no bars, which was just the way we wanted it. I was rounding a bend and at the crest of it, just in the woods, I saw it. Just a glimpse, but I could tell it was large and running fast. After I rounded the bend and fell, onto a straight. Straight away I began to accelerate, pushing my little Volvo as fast as I dared to go on the dark and twisty road. I wanted to outrun this thing. Risking a glance out of my right window, I nearly crapped myself when I saw another one. Large, hairy and fast. With my hands sweating on the window, with my hands sweating, sorry, on the wheel, I pushed my car even faster. Stupid, I know. But what would you have done? At that moment, I knew how a rabbit felt when it was being chased by wolves. Just on the other side of the straightaway, there was another bend in a road. And when my car hit it, I began to lose traction and spin out. Now, I realized that there must have been something covering the asphalt, oil probably. And as my car skidded, something heavy slammed into the passenger side, causing the door to dent in and knocked my car off the road and straight down an embankment. The car rolled at least twice. Always wear your seatbelts, kids. And I passed out for a few minutes. When I came to it, it was fully dark and the clouds had broken, revealing a brilliantly white moon. With a pounding headache and dried blood crossing on my face, I managed to get the door open and get out of my total car. I was still a bit fuzzy because my next move was, well, a little dumb. Instead of climbing the embankment and walking the road to find help, I wandered into the forest, pine needles crunching under my feet with each step. I had wandered for some time, less than an hour but more than a few minutes before my skin started to crawl again. I stopped walking and heard loud crunching behind me. I was being followed. Heart pounding, I broke into a dead sprint, taking random turns and weaving through the trees in a futile attempt to lose my pursuers. Futile because I wasn't being chased. I was being herded. I stumbled over something and face planted into a pine needle. Scrambling to my feet, I found myself in a clearing filled with bleached bones. Some were covered in moss and many were broken. 
at my feet was the thing that caused me to trip. A white human skull grinning up at me. It was almost as if it was smiling, welcoming a new addition to the clearing. Around me, multiple pairs of glowing yellow eyes floated in the darkness, just beyond this clearing. Snarling erupted around me, growing in tempo until one loud snarl cut the rest of them off. Silence only punctured by four feet crunching on a pine needles. A rich mahogany fur and eyes the colour of gold. The beast stood as high as my shoulders on all fours until it stood on its hind legs. It must have reached easily 12 feet. Towering above me, the beast glared down at me, snarling and growling, claw-like fingers twitching with anticipation of the kill. As its jaws parted, saliva glistened in the moonlight. I saw that it was missing one of its fairly impressive canines. I knew what it was, but I was too afraid to say it, even to myself. With just two impressive steps, it closed the distance between us and my knees just gave out. Sinking to the ground, I prepared for the end, for this animal to rip my throat out. Suddenly, wrapping my fingers around something smooth, I decided then and there to go out my way, the fighting way. The alpha lowered itself to finish me when I shouted with everything I had, a mighty war cry that would make my ancestors proud and swung the femur bone as hard as I could. The end of the bone made an impressive thwack as it collided with the side of the alpha's head, knocking the beast to the ground and breaking the bone in two. Along with that sudden burst of bravado, I found my legs again and once again took a mad dash for freedom, for my life. Near the edge of the clearing, a smaller wolf stepped in my way and was rewarded with its bravado, with a splintered femur shoved into its neck. The wolf cried and fell to the ground, blood shedding from the wound. A cacophony of snarls and howls pierced the air behind me, reminding me that I was on borrowed time. Still, I was going out on my terms. Running through those trees, I tripped again and landed on something flat and rough. Road! I just picked a direction and continued to run. Within seconds, I heard the pack chasing me, baying for my blood. Lights appeared ahead of me and I waved frantically for the driver's attention. The pickup truck, an old affair from long before the turn of the millennium, screeched to a halt a few feet away from me. Bathed in the light from the hood, I breathed a sigh of relief. Big mistake. One of the wolves managed to latch onto my arm, its jaws sinking deep into my flesh. Blood, my blood this time, running over its snout and onto the asphalt below, seemed to excite the others for the yipping and the howl sounded off all around me. A flash of light, an echoing roar erupted behind me and the wolf was launched away, its teeth ripping free from my arm. The driver, you see, of the truck had appeared in the light. He was older and wearing a vest with the trucker's hat and pumped his shotgun, firing a few more shells into the darkness. I think I heard a few more wolves yelp with pain. He waved for me to get in his truck. Dizzy from my blood loss, I climbed into the passenger seat breathing in the aroma of gasoline, tobacco and peppermint oil. In the truck's dome light, I saw the driver's face. He had three pale old scars across his face and wore a long canine tooth on a leather rope around his neck. Damn animals, he muttered before putting the truck in gear and moving us down the road. He drove me to the nearest town where they had a 24-hour clinic staffed by a sleepy doctor and a nurse. I'm waiting for a rabies shot before the doctor will let me go. I think I'll stay in a hotel tonight and call for a car to take me into the city. Just everyone, stay out of the Andrian Dax during a full moon. Wow, I hope you guys enjoyed that story as much as I did reading it. Please do like, comment, share and remember folks, always be safe. 
not sorry. <laughs>